Hey, what is up, everyone? You are listening to the J, the Tetsuro Moke Podcast Edition, episode 39. Konnichiwa, minasan. Hisashibri. <laughs> What's up? Okay, let's go ahead and uh, start with today's episode. We're going to talk about upcoming new releases because uh, Tomix just announced their November 2023 releases and uh, one thing that people might be happy is this little special project right here in red and white. This is the Nishi Kyushu Shinkansen N700S 8000 series. The happy birthday set. So this one will be will come with six cars for 26 thousand one hundred eighty yen so you'll be paying close to about 225 bucks for that but still looks very cool and um, you know you really don't see anything with a big old happy birthday on it so I you know it's, it's I guess you could say it's quite unique depending on you if you think it's worth getting for that while on the other side, you got the JR221 Series Suburban Train. That one's going to go on sale in, no, in uh, November. And actually, what am I saying November? This is, uh, it is November, right? I am getting confused. Yes, November. <laughs> so, um, there will be an A version with four cars, 18,700 yen. So about 150 bucks. Uh, version B with six cars will have 24,200, and then you'll have um, pretty much. Is this a basic car set? I'm trying to look at. It's the add-on set for um, 11,000 yen. So, uh, as mentioned before, I know a lot of people are going to say, "Wait a minute, this is way expensive, dude." Well, as mentioned before. Um, there's going to be a lot of changes when it comes to uh, toys and model trains. A lot of prices are going up. And what you're going to see pretty much are full sets or, you know, major sets going on sale. Possibly anywhere 150, uh, well, I was going to say 150 bucks USD, but I made more like over 15,000 yen up to 25,000 25, yen. So, um, yeah, it's going to be expensive. Um, Add-on sets will become much more cheaper, but it's the way how things are going now. Um, you know, it's unfortunately there's there's not much you can do uh, because Japan is, is uh, experiencing a tough tough 2023 you know economically and um, prices for everything has gone up in Japan so um, don't be alarmed but yeah but you know it's good for you for those who live outside of Japan so you could probably uh, take advantage of the dollar or uh, euro or pound versus yen so um, I guess that's that's a plus for those outside of Japan but for those in Japan yeah, it does get kind of pricey, and um, it's just how it is. Um, okay, so we got the 103 series, the Saha, JNR train type, uh, Saha 103. Uh, this one is old school. This is JNR, way back in the day. That uh, I'm sure people will love that emerald green train. Way back when these trains were had no air conditioning could you believe that but uh, you can get a three-car train for um, just a for sixteen thousand nine hundred nine hundred forty dollars so it's about a hundred and fifty bucks or so the other one let's see here is this an add-on to train for six thousand eight hundred and twenty and then you get the Saha 103 for thirty three hundred um, yen so um, but yeah, expect to spend quite a bit for for these three trains. Um, you got a new 7-Eleven Combini uh, release. Uh, this one will be released in June 2023 for 30.80 yen. Um, major differences now is that you have a bigger shop 
and you have a you have a parking lot structure. I'm trying to see here. I see it's a company, of course, but I do not see if I'm trying to look at the size and it's definitely engaged, right? Mm, can't see too much in there. This little type is so small for me. But then you got Seiko Mart. So for those of you in Hokkaido, we'll be stoked. Um, for those of you who don't know, who do not know that word, stoked. Uh, California slang for um, I'm happy or cool. This is very cool. So, yeah, this uh, Seiko Mart is, um, yeah, a lot of people should be stoked about it. Um, because uh, rarely do you get to see these Hokkaido uh, kombinis being released. So, that's a plus. 7-Eleven and Seiko Mart. Ooh, look what we have here. We got the Sanriku Railway Type 36 700 for 13,310, so you could get this about possibly around 110 bucks. So that's pretty cool. Um this is definitely a re-release because I know they released this before. I do own, own Sanriku um various sets, but usually the front is usually wrapped and the backside is this so of a non-motor portion but for those who've been wanting a motorized version yeah 981127 that's pretty cool you get two of those cars let's see here what else do we have we got the Hisatsu Orange Railway uh, we, I think we talked about this before this will be for uh, 13,860 yen also about 125 bucks you get the two two cars um, we get a new container right here uh, this is the Nippon oil transport well, no, this is, yeah it's GOT so yeah Japan oil transportation and then you got the first car museums for those who like to have things displayed got the little shown on here and this looks like the uh, E1 Max uh, Shinkansen so this looks promising this is a really cool release from Tomix uh, people to look forward and you know you could save up so interesting this happy birthday one I'm not sure if I'm reading this right but I think this is a this was a one day event that they had back then but yeah pretty cool I think for me if I had all the money in the world, I would get all of them. But no, um, seriously. Um, see, I have this one already without the happy birthday. This one I would like to get for more for nostalgia and for some just to own. Well, I can't say I'm nostalgic about it because I don't know. Um, Heck, I don't even know if I was born around that time when this, this train was released. But nevertheless, um, you know, you like to have some of these classic trains there. This one looks pretty cool, but um, I do not know too much about this 221 series. So let me check it out real quick. But yeah, um, let's see here see if I could find some details of this 221 well I know the set A will come with the first three cars and oh no it'll come with the first three and the last three now I'm getting it wrong now okay here we go let's get this right here set A comes with the f first three cars and the last car so that's set a set b comes with um one two three four five six cars but it's uh the i guess you could say it's the second half portion and then the add-on set would be like the middle portion so let me let me bring this here to make it 
a little bit more sense here. Okay, so as you can see here, of this um, 221, set A is right here. I guess there's two ways of doing it. You can you can get the set A plus the add-on set. So you can add the first four cars, then the add-on set for the last, for the next three, and then the final um, set A you could use as the back. Or you can do set A and set B to make it even longer. So you have those choices right there. For me, if I was were to port purchase it, I would just probably get these just the set A for me. That is because I can't run super long trains on my track. Well, I suppose if I took all those extra railroad tracks I have in my in my box here and just laid everything out, I probably could make huge diorama or even an outdoor track if I wanted to. But um, yeah, this is really cool. So let's check out what is happening with uh, Kato. By the way, the N107S, for, I'm sorry, for the Tomix is right here. And here is that happy birthday set. So you get these uh, six cars. So I'm looking here. If you own this one, would you purchase it again just for this little wrapping I guess if you're a completionist but yeah it's a little too pricey I mean I have it already but it's just a little bit too pricey to uh, to buy it all again just just for this uh, just for this wrapping but I'm sure a lot of people who are fans of this train will get it nonetheless Visiting katomodels.com, seeing what's happening with the Japanese side. I believe we went through this already, so um, we should get some new postings uh, coming up within the next week or so. So we'll check back uh, later for Kato releases. Okay, now visiting the Hasegawa site, and still no announcements for any modemo. My goodness, what's going on here? Did they stop it? I hope not. Because if you go to their site here, you see a lot of new airplanes and a lot of new uh, plastic models being sold, but that's about it. I don't see any trains, so... Unfortunately, that's how it is. And, you know, I, I think with Modemo, it was going strong, and all of a sudden... I don't know. Perhaps the cost of making things. It's hard to say, but yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with Hasegawa. You know, I'm jumping on um, OrientalExpress.jp just to see if there's any anything new about Modemo releases, and unfortunately, there is nothing. The last release was pretty much back. Um, well, then I guess it was more of an announcement for the um, 21st International Model Train Convention venue uh, for October 19th to 21st, 2022, and the limited sale of the 7707 uh, Johoku Shinkin Bank M car, which was 86.90 yen. That was pretty much the last announcement. So. I hope it's not the end of of the um, of the Modemo releases, but to be truthful, there's there hasn't been any announcements since then, which is quite sad, considering they've always uh, pumped something out each year. Hmm. Okay, so let's see what's coming out from Green Max. They have their October twenty twenty three releases. And look what we have here. Oh, a Komeda restaurant. 1150 scale. That's going to be cool for 5940 yen. This is actually quite huge. Although I've been to Komeda many times. In fact, let me show you a picture of what Komeda is so you know what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so we saw Green Max uh, announce that they're going to release a Komeda coffee, a uh, Komeda restaurant. So this is what it looks like pretty much. Um, a lot of their shops um, are very Western-like, kind of what you expect from the little one of those diners that you would have in your hometown. But this, you know, with a brick uh, facade um, right here, and also sometimes you see the the uh, steps also in mul multiple colors. But they're pretty much um, popular for for places for people to get breakfast or to get meals and here's me visiting it um let's see here going here getting the shrimp sandwich which i'd like to order there you go i think this is a tonkatsu sandwich actually now that i think about it but uh this is making me hungry now <laughs> why am i looking at this okay this is toast with jam or a uh, natto, I think it is, and me drinking my coffee. And, uh, yeah, the various releases of the matcha, uh, the matcha cake. And then here you got um, other various delicacies that you can order. But this is something like you could get uh, for, for breakfast in uh, at Kameda. You can get yourself a boiled egg with toast. Uh, toast is pretty big in Japan, just to let you know. It's, uh, it, it's the way they're shaped. A little different shape than uh, the U.S. when you think of bread. But, um, yeah, this is how it is. And it's actually very good. Um, but it's your, your typical diner. Similar to what you would see. Well, I don't want to say it's your typical diner. But it's, I guess you could say that uh, it's comparable to something like Sizzler or... That's Sizzler. Um, now I'm just trying to think of breakfast places in uh, the U.S. that have been closed down. But um, you guys know what I'm talking about. But yeah, uh, pretty much, um, you know, they sell burgers. They sell pancakes. But of course, with the Japanese touch of, you know, having shrimp sandwiches or uh, tonkatsu sandwiches. And of course, you know, with bread, you get your... Uh, sweet beans, in this case the Ogora sweet beans. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. So going back to the design, 1150 scale of Komeda. Um, for me, this is a really cool thing if you have a diorama, so you could have the buses go going by it, but rarely do I see a Komeda near a train station. Usually they're quite a distance away. Um, from a train station they're more in the city areas of, of a busy or not so big well it depends but I usually tend to see them around you know major roads and so forth but uh, for the most part I think it's very cool uh, very cool to have on in your diorama if you are needing a restaurant because I noticed that lately they've been releasing um, uh, other types of restaurants uh, I'll show you more later but this is Green Max right now. So this is pretty cool for 59.40 yen. That's not bad. So next, we got some trains here. And let me see if I can... Uh, nope, I don't see it here. Okay, so we got the, the Arigato set. Trying to read that. My kanji is not that great anymore. When I was younger, I could read this. When I was a young boy. No. Um, when I was in college, I used to read and write a lot in, uh, in, uh, in, in kana and kanji. And um, the more you don't use it, the more you start to forget. Slowly. But um, you got the E653, and then you got the, it looks like a 485 series, but it doesn't say anything here. Um, I just see the E653s, or just like a repainted version. Yeah, it looks like that's what it is. Interesting. And then you got the 5080 series, and then the 3000 series. I don't know, Green Max is really creating solid releases. Ah, they got the JR211 
um, 5000 series. For those of you who like that Shonan livery, you got the 21 or 21020. See here, Abano Liner. Liner. So, and you got the JR103s, which you've seen many times, but not from Green Max. So, I think that's pretty cool. And you get this little building right here. Like a warehouse building or a medical building. Not really sure. But um, yeah, just looking at these new releases. And so that is Green Max. Okay, so this is the Tomica site. We talk about, well, I talk about it more on the Tomica podcast that uh, uh, just a new one that, w that was just released. But uh, the reason why I am here was to show you some Tomica Town if you are into Plarel, because as mentioned, as as Green Max is releasing the Comida, we got the Cafe Gusto, which is a you, you know a uh, another diner, Western style diner, release being released for Tomica Town. So if you are into Plarel, you can add this, and you get a free car. This uh, this type of vehicle. Similar to like what uh, came out for the Pizza Law, uh, this one is similar to the um, the Sushi Roll set, which you can raise up higher or you can lower it down, depending on how how you want to have your your uh, building structure to be. Uh, this is part of the new Tomika Town Easy Cleanup. So in other words, it's folded. Um, you can fold it easily. Uh, to make it, let's see here, um, like right here, yep, you can fold it, and all their uh, Tomika Town as of 2022 are like this, so it's for people who uh, are, uh, for parents who are wanting those easy clean type of setups, and for people who just want to be more organized and not have things as messy, and also for Plarel, you got the Tomika Town um, crossroad set, and this one is um, is great for those who are looking for a, or a, you know like a traffic stop, stop lights and everything for the Plarel. So that's pretty cool. But th those are the releases right now that I know of that's been announced on the main site. Um, but yeah, let's go to the Yodabashi rankings. Okay, everyone, let's check out the Yodabashi camera train rankings and for their trains they don't they don't feature all the trains unfortunately but they do f uh, feature the Plarel train ranking so let's see what is the best seller as of May 24th so the set the Asobi the Takarotomi Plarel Asobi set best selection set is on in first place which is a great deal for people to buy as a birthday present or you know or buy yourself one because it comes with a lot of tracks including um the asobi train in yellow second place we got the plarel es08 c12 steam locomotive third place we got thomas the tank engine plarel winston and sir top ham hat fourth place is the e5 series shinkansen e6 series shinkansen connection set Fifth place, you got the S60 EF66 Plaro, which comes with these extra containers right there. Sixth place, we got the S58 Crossliner. Seventh place is the ESO4 E7 Series Shinkansen. Eighth place, we got the Herald for Thomas the Tank. Ninth, Thomas the Tank Plarel Percy. 10th place, we have the Plarel ES11, EF210 Momotaro. 11th place, we got the S42 Series 225. 12th place, we have the Thomas the Tank Dinosaur Bone Carriage. 13th place is the Shikishima. This is the part of the DX Series. 14th place, we have... Plarel Henry, TSO3. Number 15 is TSO1, Plarel Thomas. 
16th place is the E4 Shinkansen Max Connection specification. 17th is the Plarel TS13 Emily. 18th is the Plarel Hero. 19th is the pre order of the Hanzamon line 8 series and Euro Control line for Kotoshin line 10,000 series double set. 20th place is the Tokyo 22657. 3020 series Plural. So that is the Plural rankings on Yodabashi camera. Okay, so let's check out the big camera rankings. For big camera, we have the pre release, or yeah, the pre sales release, or pre sales, or pre orders. I think that's the English word. Yeah, that's the correct one. Sorry, I get my Japanese, my English, and other languages all mixed up that. Sometimes my English suffers from that, so my apologies. So, first place, Plarel. Popular sells rankings as of May 17th through the 23rd. We have the pre-order release of the Real Class 185 series, the Odorico with the green stripe. Second place is the uh, Real Plarel Real Class Odaki Romance Car. Uh, just interesting to note that these two have gone down in price on Amazon, so... Sounds, you could say you could get cheaper right now. Uh, the pre order for the Hanzam Online and Yurakocho Fukutoshin Line double set is uh, number three. Number four is the West Kyushu Shinkansen the Kamome. So that's fourth place. Fifth place is the uh, Takaratomi boarding confirmation. So this is a, like a little, um, not a remote, but something that's like a sound maker. Sixth place, you got those connecting parts. Seventh place, you got the KFO2 long tank truck. Um, and then eighth place, you got the R01 straight rail. Ninth, you got the rubber tires, those rubber bands. Tenth place is the set, the Asobi set. Eleventh place, we got the Robo Shinkalian Shinkarion Z E5 Yamanote. And the 12th place is the Shinkarion Z500 Type EVA 02. 13th is the E5 series and the E6 series Shinkansen Connection. 14th is R09. 15th, you got a suspension bridge, or the small iron bridge that is, of the J03. 16th place is the Plural J14 Block Pier. 17th is the Plural R23 Mugarel. 19th is the. Well, the 18th is the R20s, 1 4th straight rail. 19th is the Plural KF08 transport wagon. And completing 20th is the Go Go Thomas Plural Percy. There you have it. Okay, let's see what is up with Tetsudo Moke news. We got the Kato releases of the HO gauge model train TD500, TD51. Warm Terrain, which will be released on May 31st. This is going to be from Kato, and the price will be 198,000. Well, not now 198,000, but more 19,800 yen. So this should be about mm, 175 or so USD. This product is a 16.5 millimeter rail standard HO gauge model train. So this type of DD51 appeared back in 1962 as the main diesel locomotive for non-electrified trunk lines. At its peak, 649 cars were counted. During the mass production process, the DD51 had variations such as the cold and warmer climates, passenger and cargo, and pulled various passenger tr cars and cargo, which we mentioned. Warm terrain is commercialized as a prototype of the B-cold region specification of Kanto, Tokai, and Sanin of the JNR era. Equipped with snow plow, no swivel window, wiper, and other light cold resistance equipment. This accurately reproduces details such as the handrails, run boards, and end beams. Selectable license plates of 608, 627, 664, 666. Selectable maker's plate Hitachi Kawasaki. It is the model that is fun to think about how to run only for vehicles that have been active in various forms. And this was as of, this one was courtesy of Impress. So... Pretty much, um, yeah, I have two D51s. I wanted one in um, warmer regions and another one in colder regions. So 
Uh, the warmer one I have is uh, orange, as you can see here, and the other one I have for winter is blue. So, but uh, I really like DD 51s mainly for cargo. Really um, noticeable um, train when it comes to pulling cargo, so that's why I like it a lot. Okay, this news was covering this past weekend about the train festa in Shizuoka where thousands of model train cars were running. So Japan's largest railway event is Train Festa, sponsored by the Shizuoka Prefectural Cultural Foundation. It began on the 20th at Grand Ship in Suruga Ward, Shizuoka City. 32 railway, 32 railway enthusiast clubs from inside and outside the prefecture ran thousands of model railway cars. And this event was bustling, bustling with visitors until the 21st. A diorama that recreate the townscape of Shizuoka Station, Kusanagi Station, and other railway lines in the, prefect in the prefecture was exhibited, and families and others watched with enthusiasm as the train model ran through the intricately expressed scenery. The Nagoya Melpopo Club, a railway model club in Aichi Prefecture, provided a model driving experience, and the children ran the model with their eyes shining, with their eyes shining. At the stage, private railways in the prefecture also promoted the appeal of the event. So the theme of this year's was the East Asia Cultural City 2023. Fuji no Kuni Railway Talk was held where enthusiasts introduced the charm of railways in China and South Korea. Ikuya Otaki, a three-year-old from Shimizu Ward, who stayed with his family for about four hours, said with a smile, Plarel was fun. Okay, on to the next news. Okay, if you are in the Nagano area, JR East Nagano branch will hold an event, Whole Connected Festa Saku Daida, the Saku City and others. The event will be held from 10 o'clock to 1600, so 10 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. each day on June 3rd, Saturday, and the 4th, Sunday. On the second floor of Plaza Saku, there will be a train model expedition and a simulator experience participation is free so that is cool okay this is courtesy of dingeki hobby web and this is about that one structure i was talking about the one i thought it was a warehouse or it's a hospital but this one is a called the green max engage colored modern type office ivory unassembled kit 2637 railway model structure so this is great for those who want to create factories depots or stations the number one, the number two, one, three, four. The molding color of the modern office has been changed to ivory. And if needed, okay. So that will be going for 1980 yen from Amazon on Amazon JP, courtesy of Greenmax. It will be scheduled to be released on September 30th, 2023. Okay, so in terms of new releases that I received, I recently got the EF66 uh, Zero, and um, pretty much this is a full production type. The EF66 1 through 55 were built from 1968 to 1975, and it's a 6 axle 3 uh, bogeyed Bobobo -bo -bo <laughs> DC electric locomotive designed for fast freight. It was used by uh, JNR, Japan National Railways, and uh, operated later by JR West and JR Freight. And uh, as of right now, they're still in service. Uh, I know in 2016, there were 39 locomotives that are still in service. But uh, these are classic uh, trains that, um, that are great for freight. And uh, the fact that they're still being used... I think uh, is 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 amazing. Um, so we know that 2016, 39 locomotives remained in service, six EF sixty six zeros and thirty three EF sixty six one hundreds. But now, as of two thousand twenty one, there are only two EF sixty six zeros that are in service. So that's a clarification right there. But for the most part. Um, one of the reasons why I got this uh, freight train is I think it's pretty much the EF-66 is just a classic. It's something that, um, you know, when I 
was thinking about getting freight trains. I said I need to get one that um, that really stands out. And when I was uh, researching trains and freight trains in general, I noticed that it, you usually have um, well, there's there's different kinds. I mean, you you'll you'll see the DD fifty ones like you see right here being utilized. But I've been seeing a lot of these EF sixty sixes. Um, maybe the 100s or the you know the or the zeros and um i figured you know what um yeah i want to i want to check one out so i did uh, order it from kato and uh it's just a single train so it was uh it wasn't that expensive i think it was just um let's see here uh, i don't think i spent 8580 yen i think i spent well maybe i did i don't know but, it, I, of course, the dollar is better than the yen, so probably got it about 70 bucks or so. But, um, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you an unboxing of it. Okay, so this is the EF66 Zero Late Stage for the Blue Train. Um, probably one of the last EF66s that were in service so that's um, amazing that uh, Kato did release this it was released in mid-May 2023 um, let's see what it comes with um, the Tokaido Sanyo blue train traction machine seems at, at the end of the JNR the F660 series late model was fully renewed equipped with LED interior lights as 15 passenger cars with traction power on 4% slope sections and can be used in a variety of layouts the train first appeared in 1968, Showa 43, with 50% more output than the EF65 in order to meet the demand for high-speed freight trains. It was mainly used for freight trains on the Takedo and Sanyo main lines for many years, but 1985 was selected as a blue train traction machine for the same section. After the transfer from JNR to JR West, all machines were placed at the Shimonoseki Operations Center, the currently the Shimonoseki General Depot. And after that, they were modified to suit the passenger cars and continued to play an active role as a blue train traction machine on the Tokaido and Sanyo main lines. It's equipped with a slotless motor for smoother and quieter running than conventional products. You can also secure traction and enjoy driving a long blue train. Kato recommends the 10 1800 Sleeper Limited Express Sakura Hayabusa Fuji 24 Series or 14 Series, which is scheduled to be released at the same time as a towing passenger car. Product features commercialized machine belonging to JR West Shimonoseki Regional Railway Department around 2000. As a prototype, Pentagraph is equipped with PS22 lower frame cross type. Accurately reproduced the blue color on the groove on the front, the decorative band reproduced the silver light rim, headlight lighting, light bulb color LED adoption, magnet type quick head mark adoption, so that's a plus. Pre-installed front hand pick pickpocket train radio wait pre-installed front hand pickpocket train radio antenna lightning arrester release lever use of the slotless motor um, smoother and quieter running performance capable of, uh, capable of towing 15 passenger cars equipped with LED interior lights on a 4% gradient the center of the wheel reproduces the drive rubber joint unique to EF66. Selectable license plate 42, 49, 51, and 53. Maker's plate printed Kawasaki Heavy Industries and Fuji Electric. Accessories comes with front and side license plate of one of each. Quick head mark of Hayabusa and Asakaze. Knuckle coupler to get two of those. And then you can get optional parts as a head mark set for Kyushu Blue Train. Um, but yeah, check this out. In addition, I picked up the Tomix 3180s, these containers. There's light blue and dark blue. Yeah, I also got the KRS ones, the 3165s. So we end the episode 39 of the Tetsuro Moke edition of the J podcast. Um, you know, I want to thank everyone who watched the the Amtrak uh, video. Again, that was a very interesting experience of riding on an American train. But at the same time, um, you know, I've I see a lot of potential, but I see a lot of problems. 
and I'm not sure if uh, passenger trains will ever catch on in my lifetime. Um, you know, we we always hear about the you know or read about the, the good old days when trains were important until pretty much so the automobile <laughs> industry pretty much um, you know canceled. I guess you could say the uh, uh, the the interest in trains. You know, I I think the way things are structured in the U.S. in terms of uh, transportation is way different than uh, the U.S. I mean, not the U.S., but uh, Japan, Europe, and other countries. While a lot of people do use passenger trains um, or public transit, we're going to see a lot of problems. And before before we leave, let's go ahead and watch this 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 news uh, clip from CBS News Bay Area and this is what's happening with the Bay Area Transit so as you notice in 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 many metropolitan cities around the world public transit is very expensive and I'm very expensive very important but what happens when you start to lose that maybe the crime or lack of funding um, I don't know What's going to happen? Because BART, Bay Area Transit, is very, very important for the for people who are to get to their jobs. So right now it's not looking so good for BART trains. So let's let's see what's what's happening here. Bay Area mass transit with advocates warning of a potential death spiral if the governor does not step in to help. Here's what the Bay Area transit agencies are facing right now. In the next fiscal year, BART is projected to have an operating deficit of $140 million. For Muni, that number is $130 million, and Caltrain is facing a $49 million deficit. The situation will get even worse. Okay, here's the difference. And when, when it comes to um, funding, um, number one, um, for smaller trains in Japan, the Japanese government, you know, tends to, to help out these trains, uh, these, these, um, ailing railroad stations and so forth. As for the, um, deficits, this is where there's a big difference in Japan and the U.S. is that train companies are not primarily just train companies they're also real estate companies they're also they also have a brand uh, that goes into merchandise sales video games you name it this is where um, privatization was very important because um, Japan went through this with the JNR days they were also in a deficit and the only way to fix things was to split it off and privatized as you have now with JR East, JR West, and so forth. So these, uh, you know, we saw how in Japan, you know, you'll see Cebu department stores, or you know, or you, you name it. There's there's other lines that have their own stores, their own um, stations, their own their own sort of promotions and even when you can see these model trains you'll see um, you'll see releases that uh, that uh, they work they collaborate with these uh, Japanese model train makers and so forth um, you know Amtrak you know is is pretty much you know has something going on with and, and they, they manage to um, you know to to uh, to continue, <laughs> I guess you could say, but for BART, the Caltrain, and everything, look at this, this deficit, it, I don't know how they're going to fix this unless they ask the public to fund it, and for a lot of people, I think, um, I don't, you know, if it, if it becomes localized, yeah, a lot of people who use it to get to work will say, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and tax us more, uh, but for other people, people if it's more of a statewide decision a lot of people will not support that no one wants to get taxed heavily considering california is heavily taxed already so this is a conundrum right now and i don't know if there's any solution to it um 
But yeah, let's continue to watch. First for both Bart and Muni as they run out of COVID relief money. That could lead to drastic service cuts. Our Jose Martinez is live in Millbrae with the Bay Area commuters who would be impacted. Jose. Yeah, it's very interesting how they're dealing with this here at Millbrae. We spent some time with two of them. One says he barely takes BART trains. He only takes it when he has to go to the airport. Now, the other one actually depends on it, and he says if they reduce the tr number of trains, he's going to be screwed this summer. I love riding here. Meet Joey Sanko, a Bay Area resident who used to rely on BART for his daily commute. However, today he finds the transit system too dangerous. I used to pre-COVID. But uh, since COVID, obviously, nobody took it, right? But even now, post-COVID, it doesn't seem as safe as it was before, so I don't take it like I used to. I, don't, I, I just drive. We caught up with Joey as he was heading to the airport, the only reason he says he would take BART these days. But for other residents like Gerard Rujin Gabigui, who doesn't own a car, BART and Caltrain are the only options for their daily commute. The trains are very helpful. And um, I have been using the trains for the whole time. I haven't been uh, late to my normal uh, uh, services. He's a fellow at Stanford University. He takes the train to Palo Alto every day. For him, any reduction in train services during the summer would be a nightmare. And that could happen if BART and the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency, which operates Muni, don't get a $5 billion bailout included in the state budget. I think it would be problematic if it stops. Yeah, and you were telling us that you would have to take the bus. And that yes, How yes. How long would that take you from your house to get to Stanford if you had to take the bus? More than an hour, yes. But for the train, it is 20 minutes. On Wednesday, Mayor London Breed sent a letter to state lawmakers urging them to include transit operations funding in the state budget. She emphasized that San Francisco's economy, still recovering from the pandemic, cannot fully rebound if its transit systems collapse. However, Governor Newsom has already mentioned that while he's open to transit funding proposals, the state is facing its own 31 billion budget gap and might not be able to provide any substantial financial assistance. So, if it happens, is that right? Because the, the, the intentions there, right, and the plans are there, but if they can't fund it and so forth, it still doesn't happen. So the bottom line is, if it doesn't happen, then we keep doing what, what's safer for us. Okay, so as mentioned, uh, this is going to be a, a major issue. Even if they get the funding, it's still, I don't know if they're ever going to fix the issue. Because if you say, yes, we need more staffing, we need more security, we need this and we need that for maintenance, it just, the money, I mean, the cost and it just, just goes up. As for the person who said that uh, he worries about personal safety, um, that's happening quite a bit now. Um, you hear of, um, well, I'll give you an example of a friend. Uh, he was, he took the, the BART train to go to uh, Target, and the Target that's closer to the, to the station was one in a not so not the greatest neighborhood but it was you know it was during the daytime so he didn't think anything of it and when he got off there was a gang of youths that um, that beat him badly and um, he his stuff was stolen um, and this was right at the BART station and um, you know there were people there who called the police but you know this is happening and this is happening all over the United States where you see people who are you know homeless or with mental health issues even pushing people off the tracks um, it's become a problem and you're also hearing now at BART stations of people's vehicles getting vandalized and they paid for that parking area so yeah this is going to be a major problem and I don't know if the United States has uh, a way to fix the issue, but you know Japan has been there before with the JNR years, 
and they really had to sell things off. But even if they sell things off, you know, they had the they had the rail lines to support it. They had, they, you know, there were a lot of. <laughs> They became they became stronger than you know right after and I don't know if this is gonna happen with uh, in the U.S. It's just again with with Japan and other countries, a lot of people depend on riding trains. It's you know it's safe. It's it's you know it's part of life and they they are constantly evolving. When I see the state of the U.S. Um, railway industry, especially when it comes to passenger transit, you got a lot of old machines. You got a lot of old trains running, a lot of old uh, subways running, and um, that just goes to show that when it comes to funding, it comes. It, you know, these 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 uh, these companies have been put in, in like low priority. And now there are people who need to commute to work. What can you say? Buy a car? Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. So, um, this is something you, you, you don't want to see in a big metropolitan area. You know, like in Japan, they lose railway sta you know, railroad stations, smaller ones. People have to wait for trains for an hour in rural areas. But in major metropolitan areas, this shouldn't be happening. And it's somewhat uh, uh, just shocking. You know, like, you, you look at the state of the railways, again, all over the world, metropolitan, major metropolitan areas. Nothing, nothing as bad as what's happening in the U.S. and the Bay Area right now. So it's unfortunate. Anyway... We're going to go ahead and end the episode. I hope you enjoyed episode 39 of the J Tetsuro Moke Podcast Edition. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.